techniques for problem solving. So we are all worrying about the how to solve the problem with the help of the various methods. So this is what the today topic I'll be going to share with you. So these are the subtopics I'll be going to share in today's session. One is uh, what is the need of computing in machine learning and supervisor learning methods? What are the applications of machine learning and how to solve the problem with the help of basic steps? And I'll be going to share one case study with the help of the supervisor learning method. And what are the advantages, disadvantages, and challenges of supervisor learning method? So I'll be keenly focusing on the supervisor learning method. So let us see here is uh, need of computing in machine learning. First, what is the computing? Computing is the process of using computer technology to complete a given task. So whatever the task is there for the completion of the task, I have to be develop a process with the help of the computer technology. So that is what a computing. Learn how to design algorithms that make computers more efficient and intelligent. So it could be more helpful for the learning of the algorithms and also how to make a computers more efficient and intelligent. So that means I want to develop an intelligent system. So that is what we see that we are looking in the future. So what are the basic principles of the computing? You see that the first one is a programming. That means coding skills are very much important. And then I have to be concentrated on the systems thinking. System thinking means uh, as maximum as possible to reduce the inconsistency. Where the consistency is there, there we could not expect the accurate result. So that what we need to do, we have to be focused much on the to reduce the inconsistency level. And I have to develop a modeling method. So that model how to be validate and test and measuring for the performance of the system. And finally, I have to be develop an innovative method. So with the help of these are the principles of computing. Let us look into this picture. You see that the thinking of human being, you see that how human being is trying to trying to develop a programming. Once if we run the programming, then he may get the certain feedback. And again, he will be concentrate on the moderation of the what he has been uh, earlier written the code. So that code you will be modified. It is a continuous process only. It is a continuous process. Uh, never end process. This is what you see that like this. We have to be we have to be uh, develop a computing agent. That means intelligent mission. So we want to develop an intelligent mission with the help of the computing techniques. What the computing techniques already have been shared with you. One is the programming coding skills are very much important to reduce the inconsistency and how to be test that model, whether it is rightly working or not, and how to measure the performance of the model and then how to be created an innovative things. And where the major computing fields are there, one is the computer engineering, computer science, cyber security, machine learning, data science, information systems, information technology, and software engineering. So this is playing the key role in all these domains. Now, today we are going to discuss about the machine learning only. So this is what. What is the machine learning? The machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. So what we need to do, the basic aim is uh, we want to develop automatic system. So that automatic system should not take any help from the external sources. So that is what our aim. So like that, we want to develop a, a machine. So then that machine can be an intelligent machine. So what is the primary aim is to allow the computers to learn automatically without human intervention. That means automation. That is what one of the best example in present days we all hearing about that Tesla car. So driverless car. So that means automatic car or assistance and adjust actions accordingly. So it has to be work without human intervention or assistance, and it has to be adjust actions accordingly to the situation, such a system we want to develop. That is what main aim of the machine learning technique. So what are the methods of machine learning? Let us see here. So we can learn the things by the examples. You see, that I think maybe we had experience in our family also. When we are not performing well, then what our parents used to suggest, you see other family members, how they are performing, at least by looking there, uh, them, they have to be learn something like that. They may be share, they may be used to share with us. That is what learn on examples, learning on experience. So when I start the work, 
while doing the work, I can enhance myself sometimes. So that is what by doing, I can learn something. Self-learning by my own interesting. So I want to become a best coder. I want to become a system analyst. I want to become a by that. I can be improve myself. And deep learning means say, this is what you see that back propagation mechanism. So once if I did a certain task, if I'm not very happy that, again, I have to be reprocess it or moderate it, that process we need to apply. So that is what the deep learning concept. So these are the methods of learning. Okay, one is the learning on examples, learning on experience, self-learning, and deep learning. So what are the different categories? various categories of machine learning. There are generally three categories of machine learning techniques are there. One is the supervised learning. The second one is unsupervised learning. Third one is the reinforcement learning. In addition to these three, one more is there. That is the combination of supervised learning and unsupervised learning. That means semi-supervised learning method. But in general, we are talking about only three. So you, when you combine these two, that is another name that is called semi-supervised learning. So what is mean by supervisor learning? But I'll give more detailed information in the future. Here I'm giving little information regarding each and every method. So what it mean by supervisor learning? It is nothing but a task driven, what it is a classification or a regression. Classification means as maximum as possible, I'm trying to divide as much maximum as possible number of groups based on the labeling data. That is what classification. And a regression is nothing but I'm trying to find the relationship between the input variables and output variables. That means independent variables and output and, and the dependent variables. That is what the relationship between the independent variables and dependent variables regression. Unsupervised learning means when we do not have any labeling data. So then we want to concentrate much on the each and every object. What are the features are there by uh, by discovering the features, then I have to be try to make into the as maximum as the number of possible groups. That is what the unsupervised learning concept. And reinforcement learning, let us say learning from mistakes. You see that? So playing games. When I start the game, so I do the mistakes, then uh, I'll remember it. Then next time I should not repeat it. Such examples are called reinforcement learning only. So I'll give more information regarding each and every method. Let us see here is the supervisor learning method. So supervisor learning method means what we do first. What is the goal of the supervisor learning? With the mapping function, when you have a new input data, that you can predict the output variables for that data. So this is what the main goal of the supervisor learning. So what I'm suggesting here is supervisor learning means when I have the input data and output data, then what I'm doing, I'm trying to finding the mapping function. So how I'm, how I'm trying to finding the Mapping function means with the help of the input variables and also output variables. So both the information I required. So then I can find the, I can develop the mapping function. This mapping function, I can use it for the new input data. Why should I use this mapping function for the new input data for the prediction of the new input data? Only? So this is what you see that. How I am going to develop the mapping function? Let us look into this example. This is what we have been seen in the ninth class or 10th class only. Example one, let us see here is, what is the sequence here? You see that 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. What is the next number? So, what I want to do now, I want to find the what is the next number. You see, in this series, two input variables, two values are here. One is input value there, other one is output value also there. What is the input value? What is the output value? Let us assume here. You see that 2 power 1. So, 2 power 1 is what you see that power 1 is the input value. By the 2 power 1, I'm getting the output value is 2. Similarly, 2 power 2. What is what about it is output value? 4, 2 power 3, 8, 2 power 4, 16. Next number is what you see that what is the input value? Next number means fifth position number. Fifth position means 2 power 5. 2 power 5 means 32. Let us see in this series, I'm getting two different input uh, two different values. One is input value as well as output value. So with the help of the input value and output value, I'm trying to developing a mapping function. What is the mapping function here? Let us see here y is equal to 2 power x, y is equal to 2 power x. Suppose if I can get the new input data, x is equal to 6, that means 2 power 6, sixth position value, what is that? Suppose if I get the new input value, that is what seventh, 2 power 7, that is what the seventh position value. Like this, I can easy to predict what is the outcome of the, so for the new input data. So this is the process of the supervisor learning method. You see that when I have the input variables, and output variables, and then I'm trying to develop a mapping function 
this mapping function I may be using for the new input data for prediction of the output. So that is the purpose of the supervisor learning method. Here you see that. This is what the example I have shared. So let us see here is, this is what the label data. So input and output, both the information is available. So the label data set is there. This is, let us assume this is a label data set. Once I apply the supervisor learning algorithm, then I have been developed a model. What is that model is this? Y is equal to two power X model. So once I have a two power X model, so then if I want to find the sixth input value, that is what new observations. So two power six, maybe X value is six. Then with the model, what I can predict the values. So that is what Y is equal to two power X means. So two power six, whatever the two power six value, that is what prediction value. Like this, we have to be, so once again, I'm repeating, what is the goal of the supervisor learning? With the mapping function, when you have new input data, that you can predict the output variables for the data. You see, with the help of input variables and output variables, I have developed the mapping function. With the help of this mapping function, I'm trying to find in the prediction value for the new input data. This is what you see that, like this. So let us see here is another example. Second example, example two. So let us see here is the text data is available and here is a category. This is my label data. So this is what label data. So what is the labeling of the first uh, first row? You see that content, what is share your OTP? What is the labeling of this text information spam category? Next document is secure your OTP, non-spam category, like give me CVV, so spam category, share me pin number, spam category. So now I have the data set. Now I have the data set. What data set I have? So first I want to analyze the data set, whether the data set is having input and output values or not. Here is input available as well as output also. Output means spam or non-spam category, labeling. So labeled data. So this is called the labeled data. So when it is uh, having the labeling, then I can easy to apply the, the supervisor learning method. So that is what I'll be going to explain to you with the help of the Navy base algorithm in coming slides. Now, just for the conclusion of this, what you see that whether it is a labeled data or not, it is a labeled data. So with the help of the labeled data, so what I want to do, consider the query string to classify as follows. So whatever the query is there, this query is comes under which category or under which category means under spam category or a non-spam category. This is what we want to try to find with the help of this training data. So we, we have a doubt, sir, what is the use of the machine learning technique? What is the use of machine? You see, as a human, what we need to do, send me your OTP. As a human means you see that it has to be cross-verified this, 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 this. This is the process is very lengthy process. Maybe n number of documents are there. If I want to do it with the help of the human, so it could be taking longer amount of time that has to be minimized. It. How do I minimize it? With the help of the computing technique by developing the intelligent machine that could be possible to find the category of the my query. So this is what send me your OTP. You see, this is what. So this I'll explain with you uh, with example, please, very clearly. Next, unsupervised machine learning. So what is mean by unsupervised machine learning? Unsupervised machine learning is where you only have input data and no corresponding output variables. You see that when this is the data, let us assume it. You see that in this data, in the earlier you see that when we look into this data, two, two variables are here. One is input variable, other one is output variable. That means labeling data. So in this example, you see that it doesn't have any labeled information. So then what I need to do with the help of the unsupervised learning method, I have to I have to be identify the features of this uh, each and every document with respect to the features of this document. I have to be find out whether it is a spam category or a non-spam category or any one of the cluster one or cluster two. Like that, I have to be try to identify with the help of the features only. So this is what one of the concept. What he is saying, unsupervised learning is where you only have input data and no corresponding output variables. So let us see no corresponding output variables. Then how do we find the output variables with the help of the features only? So what about the features are there? I have to, with respect to the features of this whole text, I have to decide whether it is a spam or non-spam. So here we, our intelligence is required. Human interference is required here. Human interference. Without expertism, it could be very difficult to apply the unsupervised machine learning concept. Another example. Example two, let us see here is given a set of numbers 
I have a set of numbers, but my my leader is asking, what is that? You do the partitioning into two sets. When I'm asking the partition into two sets, means you see that I'm dividing into two groups as my own knowledge. What my own knowledge? Odd numbers as a one group, even numbers as a, another group. You see that here another possible division also there. What is that another possible division? Single digit number and two digit number also. Or another possible division also is there, possibility, prime numbers, non-prime numbers. Or another possible division is what? Fibonacci numbers or non-Fibonacci numbers. Like that, various possible combinations are there. This is what you see that for all these possible so combinations, I have to be develop a mission. I have to be develop a mission. Whatever the user is asking, as for the user requirement, I should be able to provide the information. So this is what our responsibility, so that we want to develop efficient and intelligent machine only. So why this is see that? Why not single and two digit? So this is what the doubt we have when I divide it into two partitions. Both mine and your solution can be right. So both also acceptable. Like this, I have to be develop the system in efficiently and in intelligent manner. So this is what. But let us take another example. Supervisor learning method. It can apply what has been learned in the past to new data using labeled examples to predict future events. Let us assume here is the two elements are available or two objects are available. You see that with the labeling information, I have the label information, male and female. So I can easily to divide into two categories. I can easily to divide into two categories without any, without any further processing of the features of the each and every object. So this is what the supervised learning method. But whereas in the unsupervised learning, you see that unsupervised learning studies, how systems can infer a function to describe a hidden structure from unlabeled data. Let us look into this. This is unlabeled data. You see that here male and female not available. So what I want to do, if I want to divide into two groups, then how can I divide into two groups? Based on the similarity method, I have to be try to find out the features of the each and every object. And then I have to be try to compare the object features of the both objects, then if both are similar, then I can make it as a one group. If both are different, then I have to make it to two different groups only. So this is the process we want to apply. So that is what I have to be try to identify the labeling of each object. How? Okay. Why unsupervised learning method? Finds all kind of unknown patterns in a data. So you see that to find the features which can be useful for the categorization. You see here no labeling. So then what I want to do, I have to try to identify the features of object one and also I have to identify the features of object two. And then I have to try to come find the similarity between these two uh, objects. If the both are similar, then I can make it as a one group. If both are dissimilar, then I have to divide into two groups. This is what the process we want to apply with the help of the unsupervised learning method. Whereas in the supervised learning method that could not be required. Simply I can divide based on the labeling only. But here no labeling so that I have to be concentrate on the features of the each and every object to find features which can be useful for the categorization. All the input data to be analyzed and labeled in the presence of learners. You see that I have to be analyzed each and every data and then I have to be identified the labeling for each and every. This is what the process of the unsupervised learning. Semi supervised learning, let us see. It fall somewhere in between supervised and unsupervised learning since they use both labeled and unlabeled data for training. Typically a small amount of labeled data and a large amount of unlabeled data. Let us look into these two samples. You see that this is the labeled data. This is unlabeled data. So then what we want to do here is see that. So which has the labeling that is not a problem, but which is not having the labeling. So in this process, what we want to do, I have to be applied similarly what we discussed in the unsupervised learning method, the similar process we want to apply and I have again, we have to go for the making into the several subclusters or maybe groups. So reinforcement learning, let us see. Reinforcement learning, it enables an agent to learn in an interactive environment by trial and error using feedback from its own actions and experiences is that. Okay. So what we are, okay. It, let us see your examples, playing games, swimming, and the kids walk, etc. cetera, I see that. So what we had experienced when we were in the childhood, you see that when we were in the baby 
yeah. last time. So then what about you see that baby starts to walk. So how this is what you see that when she is to try to walk, then her mother is uh, giving the direction to her. How she is giving the direction is one is maybe warning, other one is maybe appreciation, other one maybe uh, observe on the basis of the observation, she may be directing, not like this, not uh, you have to become like this, like this, like that. You see that she is giving. This kind of process is called the reinforcement learning only. Or let us see kids to jump, you see that when he is jumping, you see that her mother is uh, taking the action. What about the action? You see that when he is properly jumping, then she is not uh, warning. She is giving the reward. If he is not properly jumping, then what she is based on the observation, she may give the direction to this. So this is what you see that kids to jump process is also called reinforcement learning. So like this, what we want to do, we want to develop a machine. Let us assume agent is a computing machine or computing machine. So like how we are trained, how we train the child, the similar fashion we want to train the, we want to develop the mission like a agent. So this is what we want to build in the present scenario. Okay. Once again, I'm repeating. Reinforcement learning. It enables an agent to learn in an interactive environment by trial and error using feedback from its own actions and experiences. You see, playing the games. So that is what you see that I once I start the playing game, if I do pro, if I play very well, then I'll get the reward. If I'm not playing very well, I may get the warning or I may get the certain kind of uh, actions from others. As per their action, I have to be play the game. Same swimming also. This is also it looks like a reinforcement. Kids walk or kids jump. So this is what reinforcement learning. So it is a trial and error method. In the category of the supervised learning, so in general, there are two categories are there. One is the classification method. Other one is the regression method. What is the classification method means? So I need to classify the information on the basis of the properties available in the data set. Regression means what I need to do. I need to try to find the relationship between the independent variable and independent, uh, dependent variables. So this is what y is equal to mx plus c. That is one of the best example for the regression. And a classification is what a gender based on the gender. If I want to classify the total number of students, that is also one of the example for the classification method. But I'll be going to share with you in this presentation the classification method. So uh, with the help of the Navy based cla classifier method. And what are the applications of machine learning? Let us see here is uh, applications of machine learning. One is the traffic prediction. So I can apply the machine learning technique for the traffic prediction, where the traffic is there, then immediately it could be divert the route. So that is what Google map already it is giving the solution for us, virtual reality. And email spam also, you see that we had a mail and a spam mail. You see that when we doesn't like it, such an information from so on, so mail. If that I can keep it in the spam, next time it will not be allowing into the my mail. So that is what driverless cars already, I think Tesla, a car has been introduced, it is on the road right now. Maybe in the short period, we may see in India also on some of the roads, driverless cars. Okay. And online fraud detection also there. If this is very popular right now. You see that people are, are now sitting in the home and then they are doing a lot of things uh, to extract the money from other accounts. So this is, uh, I think in future, definitely it will be having the highest demand. And product demand also, speech recognition, I think you had experience with your cell phone also already. Speech recognition with the speech recognition also, you can make it as a password. And medical diagnosis, MRI scans, you see that now the doctors want to test every MRI scan and then there will be little, little variation among the person to person. So they want to spend a lot of amount of time and they want to get the accurate result. Sometimes they may not be able to find the accurate result. So that what we required, we required the machine learning system. If that is there, then it could be provide the accurate result. And NLP means natural language processing. Let us see in the Google also. Now, if you have want to maybe translation from the English to Telugu, such as tools are available. So that could be only with the help of the machine learning that could be possible. And image processing also image object detection and image recognition and also image classification. These are the possible things are required in future, no doubt about it, because of uh, everywhere you might be seeing that uh, surveillance system. 
when we have the surveillance system, but we don't have the preventive measures, we don't have the avoidance methods, only we are uh, trying to find the discovery method, uh, recovery process only. So that is not the major purpose. What we are introducing the surveillance systems. Once something is going to happen, immediately I should get the certain message from that location. So that could not be available right now. So maybe in future you can see with the help of the surveillance system, but maybe in some of the places it is there, but not in India. Okay, these are the applications of machine learning. So plenty of applications are there, but here I'm sharing only few applications. Okay in the manufacturing sector also, okay? So problem solving skills, how to solve the problem? This is very much important in uh, engineering because of now that ECS or Infosys or any other company is looking for the problem solvers than the graduates. So they want only professional engineer rather than graduate or maybe engineer. So then what we want to do, first we have to identify the problem. Then we need to understand the problem. So first identify the problem understand the problem and again you have to set the goals uh, what process you want to apply and performance in terms of the time or in terms of the memory in terms of any other aspect you have to set the goals first one is because of now the company is uh, looking for the performance uh, coders only rather than the coder so that we want to set the goals uh, what process you are applying what performance of the programming and is there any alternative methods you see that suppose if i want to find a certain task solve the certain task in that aspect I, I may be having the alternative methods, X method, Y method, Z method, K method, etc. In those methods, which is the right method for my data or my problem, that is what you want to decide it. Oh, once uh, you have we collected all the methods, then you have to be selected, which is the more relevant method for your problem, how to select it. And then you go for the implementation. Once I implement it, then I have to be evaluated for the testing of my method, whether it is rightly giving the result or not, whether it is giving the accurate result or not. So for that purpose, I have to evaluate. This process is a cyclic only. It's a never end process. So this is a continuous process only. This is the continuous process. So these are the steps are required for the problem solving. Okay. Let us say data set I'm taking. One data set. I'm taking the data set here. So what is the problem? My problem here, let us see. Intensifying the cyber security using Navy based classifier. So, this is what uh, my is it? I have been already shared with you. This is the data set. This data set is available with me, the train data set. With the help of the data set, I have to be consider the query string to classify as follows. So, this query comes under which category? That is what I want to take a decision as a machine. As a human, maybe you see that with intelligence power, I can maybe predict it. This is what the uh, some category, but as a machine, machine doesn't have any intelligence power. So that we want to, we want to develop a model, and that model we have to be integrated with the machine. Then machine can give the result. So this is what we are our interest. So now consider the query string to classify as follows. Now this query is a comes under which category? So then what I want to do? So the data set I have. What data set? This is a trained data set I have. With the help of this, how to be decided? change this. So let us see now with the help of Navy based algorithm. So Navy based classifier, it is a simple and a powerful algorithm for classification. It is a classification method only based on the base theorem with an assumption of the independence among predictors. So this is what I think minimum knowledge is required before going to understanding of the Navy based algorithm. That is what probability and statistics. I think we, uh, I hope you all very familiar probability and statistics. It is easy to build and particularly useful for very big large data sets. It is very easy to build and very useful for the large amount of data set. A Navy based rule is the basis for many machine learning and data mining methods. In general, it is used when the data is high and when the attributes are independent of each other. Attributes are independent of each other. So that what we required, we want to analyze the data set, whether the attributes are independent of each other or not. Okay. It is used to model normal and suspicious network activity. And also you see that it describes the probability of an event based on prior knowledge of conditions that might be related to the event. So this is what. Let us see now the finding probability of event B when event A is true. When event A is true, then what are the possibilities of B? 
this is what the formula we might be learned from the uh, in the probability and statistics course. So I think P of B by A equal to P of A divided by P of A by B multiply P of B. So this is the formula. P of A and P of B, the probability of A and B without any correspondence with each other. Okay. Next P of B by A, posterior probability, the probability of event B after event A is true. So I'll explain very clearly with the example, what is this? Okay. Let us see what is uh, now my aim is what spam detection using navy base classifier. What is uh, how to detect the whether the my whatever the query I receive whether it is a spam or non spam that is what I want to decide it with the help of the navy base classifier. So what is mean by navy base algorithm? Let us see here. First, I want to consider and analyze the data set. I have to be considered and analyze the data set. The next step is what. Classify the data set into different categories with the labels. Classify the data set into different categories with the, the labels. Next, apply the Navy based classifier and train the machine on the data set. Test the machine by giving a query with the different categories. Finally, I have to be take a decision on the basis of the highest probability value will decide the category of the query. So these are the steps I must be follow when I am applying the Navy based algorithm. So first step is what consider and analyze the data set. Let us say this is what consider and analyze the data set. This is what the data set I'm taking regarding the spam and non spam category data security issue data set. This is what. So let us look into this data set. First, I want to see whether this data set is a label data set or not. You see, this is what input data. This is what the output data. So output and input both are available. So that this is the label data. When it is a labeled data, then simply I can apply the Navy base algorithm. If it is unlabeled data, then I should not able to apply the supervised learning method. So when I can apply the supervised learning method, then the data set is a labeled data set only. Okay. So let us see here. Label labeling is here. Spam, non-spam, spam, spam, non-spam. Now, what is my next step? Is step two: train the data set and perform the text analysis results as follows. Now analyze the data set. I want to analyze this data set. What how to be analyzed in this data set? Total number of words in the data set. Let us count it in this uh, input. Please, uh, the total number of uh, words with repetition also. 18 is there. If you want, you can count it. So I'm not going to count because of time is very short. Only one hour. Okay. Total number of words in the data set. In this input data set, the total number of words are 18. Next, here is the two labels are there. So I want to divide into two categories. One is a spam category, other one is non-spam category. So how many words are there in the spam category? You see that total number of words in the spam category. What are the spam categories you see that? This is what you see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that total number of words in the spam category equal to 10. Similarly, you want to find the already how classified this data. Spam category and non spam category on the basis of the labeling. So now I want to calculate the total number of words in the non spam category. You see that non spam category is this one yellow color rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let us see here is total number of words in the non spam category 8. Similarly, total number of distinct words. So in the whole data set, in both, both means both, uh, overall data set, that means spam and non spam category. So the total number of distinct words are 12. You count it, distinct words means without repetition. Okay. So then this could be possible only once if you apply the tokenization. After tokenization, then you will get the all the individual words. And then you apply the sorting method. Once you apply the sorting method, then you can get the easy to identify the duplicate words. With the help of the sorting technique, you can eliminate the duplicate words. Finally, you may get the these are the words, 12 words. So total number of distinct words means unique words. Call. So like this, I have to be trained the data set. So now training is over. I have trained this data set. So what information I extracted here? This is what you see that. Now my query is my query is what you see that consider the query string to classify as follows. Now I want to take a decision whether this query is under the category of spam or a non spam. This is what my result. I want to identify the labeling. So I want to identify the labeling for my query. So with the help of this training data, train data, the help of this 
train data. Okay, so that is what I'm going to find it. Find the probability of the given query as follows. So what is my query? My query is to send me your OTP. So probability of send me your OTP. Let us see this is a general formula. So P of send multiply P of P multiply P of your multiply P of OTP. So probability of send, probability of me, probability of your. Like I want to calculate the probability. But now at present, I do not know whether my query is under the category of the spam or non-spam. So that I may be going to calculate the probability with respect to the spam category, with respect to the non-spam category. Once if I calculate the probability of my query with respect to the spam and with respect to the non-spam, then finally I can take a decision which is having the highest value that my query is, comes under that category. That is what the algorithm has been. Okay. So let us see here is P of spam. Send me your OTP. Send me your OTP. You see that now I have calculated the probability. So what is my probability? Let us see here is 0 by 10. So spam category. Let us see. Spam category means 0 by 10. What is mean by 0 by 10? So spam category, you see that in this uh, like total number of words in the spam category, how many words? 10 words are there. For which word I have to be calculate the probability send. So in spam category, let us see here is spam. Send is see, could not find in this. You could not find in this. You could not find in this. So that send not appeared even once also in the spam category. So that the probability is what? 0 by 10. So that the probability is 0 by 10. Multiply similarly for me also, you calculate 2 by 10. 2 by 10, 10 is indicating the total number of words in the spam category. Let us see here. Total number of words in the spam category 10. So now what about me? You see that me here. No, me here is only once. You see that in the spam category, second time appeared. So me frequency is what? Two in the spam category. So me appeared two times. So that two by ten. Similarly, two by ten. Similarly, you are also you see that how many times appeared in the spam category? Total number of words in the spam category. Similarly, OTP also, how many times appeared in the spam category data and what? How many total number of words in the spam category? So this is the value I have been taken. Finally, I, once I compute these values, then I may get the value 0, 0 by 10. So that means 0. 0 multiply anything is equal to 0. So finally, the spam category probability is 0. So this is one of the drawback in this method. So that what I'm doing here is see that if the probability of the one of the words is the in the given data is a zero. One of the words in the given data is a zero. This is known as the zero frequency. This is known as the zero frequency. It can solve using the Laplace estimation or a smoothing method. So when when one of the word is a zero frequency, in that case, this method is not applicable. So that what we want to do, we want to introduce the Laplace estimation method or smoothing method. The Laplace estimation is given by, let us see, look into this is the Laplace estimation method. P of word, how to calculate the probability of the respective word equal to word count plus alpha. This is what constant. Why I'm taking here is a constant because of here is zero frequency there. That is what I want to overcome the problem. So alpha divided by the total number of words in the category, total number of words in the category, the total number of distinct words in the whole data set that means in both the categories in both the categories means in the spam category as well as non spam category so this is the formula we want to apply for calculation of the each word with respect to the spam category and also with respect to the non spam category now let us look into this probability of the finding the query in the spam category so let us see here is spam category so spam category means what send Send how many times appeared in the spam category? Zero time. Plus, with the, based on the formula, alpha is one. So zero plus one divided by the total number of words in the category. For which, what category I'm calculating? I'm calculating the for the spam category. In the spam category, how many words are there? Ten. In the overall data set, how many distinct words are there? One. So this is what you see that here. You see total number of words in the spam category, ten. And total number of distinct words are 12. And I want to take the send. Send is not appeared in the spam category, so that zero. So, like this, you have to be calculated. So, P of send spam category 
zero indicating frequency of the send in the spam category plus one as per the Laplace estimation formula divided by 10 is indicating the total number of words in the spam category. This 12 indicating the total number of distinct words in both the categories means in the whole data set without repetition. That means unique words. So 10 plus 12. So this is the probability. Maybe. Similarly, you see that P of me spam category. You see that this is what me is up here. Me frequency is what? What is the frequency of me in this? You see that in the spam category. One, two. So that two. So that two. Two plus constant value is one divided by the total number of words in the spam category plus total number of distinct words. So this is what? So 0 0.136, this is value. Similarly, you calculate for the how many words are there in the query? Send me your OTP. In the query, how many words are there? Four words are there. Send me your OTP. So yours also you see that how many times appeared yours? One time. Let us look into the you know, database. In the spam category, your here is once. Let us say no, no. So only one time appeared. That means frequency of the word your is one. So that is what you see that one plus one divided by total number of words in the spam category plus total number of distinct words. This is what. Similarly, P of OTP of spam category. Let us see here. Of spam category, one plus one divided by 10 plus one. So this is what you see that finally multiplying of all this. Uh, 0 0.045 multiply, 0 0.136 multiply, 0 0.9090 multiply, 0 0.090. So finally, P of send me your OTP of spam. This is what the value I achieved with the help of the navy base algorithm for the spam category my query so this is the similarly i have to be calculate for the non-spam category also the process is the same no change okay probability of finding the query in the non-spam category in the non-spam category let us see p of send non-spam category let us look into this uh, uh, send is uh, how many times appeared in the non-spam category let us see here is non-spam category if this is the table you see that non spam category means let us look into this so send you see that here is not there here also not there so that send frequency is zero and how many words are there in the non spam category you see eight words are there okay non spam category this is what we want to remember let us see here is p of send non spam category frequency of the send in the non spam category zero plus one constant divided by the total number of words in the non spam category 8, the non spam category 8. If this is value I have been extracted with the help of the analysis train analysis plus total number of distinct words in whole data set. So, this is what the probability is. This is value. Similarly, you calculate P of me non spam category. So, what is the me is the frequency 0 plus 1 divided by total number of words in non spam category total number of distinct words so this is the value similarly you see that for p of your non spam category 2 plus 1 divided by 8 plus 2 so 2 is indicating frequency of the your in the non spam category only plus 1 is a constant divided by 8 uh, uh, words in the non spam category total distinct words in the whole data set 12 so like this you calculate similarly for p of otp non spam category so this is the probability you see that so you multiply all this, then finally you get this value. So this is what non-spam category value. Previously, you see that previously for the spam category, this is the value. And for, uh, for non-spam category, this is the value. In these two values, which is the, you see that. Finally, probabilities over the query are, P of send me your OTP, non-spam category, this is the value. P of send me your OTP, spam category, this is the value. So when we compare these two values, what is the finally algorithm is saying, which is having the highest value, that query comes under that category only. So this is what you see that in these two, which is the highest value, in these two, which is the highest value, this is the highest value. So that as per the algorithm, step five, from the above observations, the query, send me your OTP falls under the category of spam as it has the highest probability. So like this, we have to be develop algorithm and then we have to be add on to the machine. Then the machine can become an intelligent.
Okay, so this is what uh, this query is. Uh, send me your OTP falls under the category of spam as it has the highest probability. Similarly, you take your own query and then you calculate it. Then there is a possibility of that. And another drawback is there here is what is the drawback I'll be going to share with you in the end of the session. Okay, that you may be having in your mind also. Suppose my query is not belongs to either one of the category, then what? As per the supervised learning method, it has to be either one only, no alternate option. So that is one of the major drawbacks in the supervised learning method. By the application of navy based classifier, the spam detection can be easily detected and enhances cyber security. So this is what one of the application of the navy based classifier, which is that application is cyber security. This is one case study like this. I'll be going to explain one more case study. One more case study. Given the weather conditions, each tuple classify the conditions as fit or unfit for playing a game. Now, what I want to do in this process, I want to decide whether shall I play the game or not, including with certain conditions. So that is what we are going to discuss in this case study. What is that? You see that. You see, here is. So today, this is the data set I have available. Okay, this is the data set I have. But now, with the help of this data set, what I want to do, I want to take a decision. Today is these are the possible conditions. What are the possible conditions? Means sunny, hot, normal, false. With these possible conditions, shall I play or not? So that is what the decision I want to take it. How do I take the decision? So if I want to check the whole data set with manually, it could be take longer amount of time. So that when we introduce a, a develop a machine a method, that could be easy to predict. That could be easy to predict whether shall I play or not. For that purpose, I want to train this data. Now this is the raw, this is the data. So this data, how to be train it? How to train? Let us see how to train this data. First, I want to train the data. How to train this data means let us see here is how many attributes are here? Total number of five attributes are here. One is output attribute. This is what labeling attribute. So first I want to analyze the data set, whether this data set is having the input values and output values or not. So which is the output value? Play a game is output value, either yes or no. But these are the input values. These are the input values. So both the values I have in this data set. So I can apply the supervision learning method. If I do not have this play a game data, then I should not be able to apply the supervised learning method. So in that case, what I want to do, I want to introduce the unsupervised learning method. But with respect to this data, I can use the supervised learning method. Why I'm selecting the supervised learning method means in this data set, input values are available and output values also here. Output values are nothing but label values. How many labels are here? Two labels are here. So that I can categorize into two categories. Okay, I can divide into two groups or I can divide into two clusters. Let us see here. This is what no group and S group. So no group S group. You see that this is what no group S group. S group is nine. No group is five. Let us count it. Red mark one, two, three, four, five. So total five no's are there. Total how many records are here? Fourteen records are there. Fourteen minus five is nine. So nine is S group. Y is five group. So this is what the five play S group. Now similarly, what I want to do here, I have to train this data. So here is our intelligence is required. This machine doesn't have any knowledge. So in that case, what we want to do, we have to be trained up by our expertise. So how many attributes are here? Outlook, temperature, humidity, wind. So in outlook again, there are various cat various categories are there. Similarly, in temperature also, similarly in humidity also, similarly windy also. You see that. In that case, what about outlook? Outlook, how many categories are here? Rainy, sunny, overcast. So that you see that total, you look into this entire column, please. Once you look into this entire column, you can find total three different categories only. What are the three different categories? One is rainy, second one is sunny, third one is overcast. So that I want to take it sunny, overcast, rainy. But this is the possibility of the no. Uh, even if the rainy season uh, may, be, may not be possible to play. Even sunny also may not be possible. Even overcast also may be possible. Like this, you see that yes, no option. Yes, no option. 
okay so sunny means uh, let us see here is uh, sunny sunny how many time so you see that no option sunny is zero so let us see here the i have if there are certain mistakes please you correct uh, sorry sunny is what you see that oh outlook sunny is no one okay similarly no two and similarly three so total three knows when sunny condition i should not play the game so that is what you see that sunny knows are three and how many s's yes, sunny you see that s yes, sunny one two okay two let us see sunny not there okay so total two s's yes, three knows regarding sunny two three similarly overcast also you calculate overcast overcast also let us see here is what about overcast is uh, how many s's yes, how many knows are there you count it here let us look into this overcast is s1 uh, s2 and s3 s4 so total four no sir zero let us look into here no sir zero regarding the overcast the process is the same for rainy also the process is similar for the rainy also three two so rainy you see that rainy is no is one okay and let us see here no is two Rainy S is one two one, rainy S is two two, rainy S two three, rainy. So total two three. So S so is it uh, three and no is it two? You see that. So this is what. Now I I know the values of each category. Now I want to calculate the probability of yes, probability of no. How can I calculate the probability of yes and probability of no? So you know that the total number of. Let us see here is. So total is this is what you see that S is two, S is two, and total how many are there S category? Here is let us look into this nine. So what is the probability of uh, Sunny of with respect to the S category two by nine? Similarly for the no category, here is you see that what is the total summation of this five? So what is the no category three by five, three by five overcast? So what about here is four? So the total summation is nine. Four by nine is S category, and what about no category zero by Five, you see that no category is total is five, so zero five, so the, zero by five. Rainy similarly three two, you see that three by nine two by five, so three by nine two by five. Then how to be tested? Whether I have been considered correctly all the values or not for the testing purpose? Here if if I should get the hundred percentage, so all the tuples have been considered. Okay. So similarly, how to be calculate temperature also? The process is the same place even for temperature also. What about temperature is here? You count it here. How many are there categorical values? Hot, mild, cool. So that here you take it hot, mild, cool. How many no's are there? Hot with respect to this play game. And how many S's are there? You count it with respect to this label data, please. With the label data. What the process have been applied for the outlook? The process is the same for temperature also. Similarly, for the humidity also. Humidity also, you see that here, how many? Categorical values are here: high, normal, high, normal. You see that only high, normal. So now I want to count it. High, how many no's are there? High, how many s's are there? High is uh, how many s's are means total three s's are there. You see that uh, no is one, two, s two one, s two so two two. So now you see that two three two no three s two okay and s three. You see that like this. You see that. And S is no, so no is four. No is four. S is three. So let us say high is three four. Similarly, normal also. Calculate for normal also. How many S's are there? How many no's are there? For with respect to the normal. So that is what six one. So this is what total is S is nine. No's are five. So then what is the probability of high is with respect to S three by three by nine. Similarly, for high is no aspect four by nine five. You see four by five. Similarly for normal six by nine, you see that S category, no category one by five. So like this, you calculate for humidity. Similarly, you calculate even wind, even for wind also, the same process, false and true. Only two categories are there, false and true. So when the false category, you see that how many S's are there? Six. You count it here, please. A false, how many are there? Uh, with respect to the yes, and false with respect to the no, how many are there? You count it. That is what you keep here. So this is the probability. So like this, I have trained the data. So this process is called trained data. This is the trained data. Now this data I can use for the decision making. 
whether shall I play the game or not for my conditions. What are the my conditions? Sunny, hot, normal, false. The similar fashion you see that today equal to sunny, hot, normal, false. So probability of playing game is given by. You see the probability is what you see that P of S today. P of S today, P of no today. So there are two categories are there. P of S today means sunny is. What about let us see here is a sunny. Sunny is outlook. You see that sunny is a category of outlook. Outlook is S category is what is the probability? Let us see is 2 by 9. 2 by 9. 2 by 9 multiply. So next hot. Hot is what you see that in the category of the, in the under the under the attribute of temperature. Hot is what about you see that S category 2 by 9. So this is 2 by 9 multiply 2 by 9. So then what about next one is normal. Normal is S category. See that normal S category. So 6 by 9, 6 by 9. Okay, multiply. What is the false? You see that false is false is wind. Wind is see that this is what S category 6 by 9. So multiply 9 by 14. What is mean by 9 by 14? The total number of S's are 9 and total number of tuples are 14. So 9 by 14. So this is the probability of S category. This is the probability of S category. Similarly, you calculate the for no category also. No category also is that what is the query? Sunny. For the sunny, no category is what? 3 by 5 multiply. For the heart, let us see heart is here. 2 by 5. Let us see here. 3 by 5 multiply. 2 by 5 multiply. Normal. Let us see normal. No category. 1 by 5. So 1 by 5 multiply. What about false? False in the windy category. You see that 2 by 5, 2 by 5. Then what is this 5 by 14? 5 by 14 means 5 no's in total number of 14 tuples. So 5 by 14. So this is the probability value of approximately yes value and no value. Now, since P of yes today plus P of no equal to 1. So now I want to normalize it. So how can I normalize it? This is the method we had experience in the mathematical process. So this is what you see that P of yes today equal to 0 0.0141 divided by 0 0.0141 plus 0 0.068. So this is what normalization 0 0.68, 0 0.38. In these two values, which is the highest value, which is the highest value in these two values, P of S today greater than P of no today. So that this condition is true. When this condition is true, then my conditions are possibility to play the game or not. It is a more probability so that I can play the game, game with the following conditions, with the following conditions. So prediction that game would be played is S. So I can play the game with the following conditions. So this is what the positive prediction of the result with the help of the navy based algorithm. Advantages of supervised learning to collect data or produce a data output from the previous experience. So this is very much easy to that. And to optimize the performance criteria using experience. So by experience, you can optimize it. To solve various types of real world computation problems. This is what I have been explained to you. Two examples have been shared with you. One is a spam category. Other one is a weather prediction category. So to find out exactly how many classes are there before giving the data for training. You see that here what I did. How many categories are there have been decided here first during the training period. So that this is very much important. And disadvantages of supervised learning. Decision boundary might be overtrained. If you have a training set which does not have examples that you want to have in a class. So this is what very much important. And a lot of computation time, what we observe, computation is more. It cannot cluster or classify data by discovering their features by its own. You see, we are never bothering about the features of the input values. Just we are going through the based on the label data only. So not unlike unsupervised learning. So maybe certain mistakes may be there. If the mistakes are there in the given a data, then there is a possibility of the uh, to reduce the accuracy of the outcome. In case of classification, if we give an input which is not from any of the classes in the training data, then the output may be a wrong class label. Suppose let us take a data set, male and female is there. Only two labels are there. Suppose my data, new data is a transgender. So once if I test it for the, my transgender, the transgender may be going to either male or female category only. 
So that means it is giving the wrong class label only. So that is what the one of the drawback is there in supervisor learning method. So in this case, which is the best one? Unsupervisor learning method is the best one for, for finding of the right class for the respect to input data. For example, let us say you trained an image classifier with the cats and dogs data. Then if you give the image of a giraffe, the output may be either cat or dog, which is not a correct. So earlier I have been taken one example that is what male or female transgender. In this, uh, I'm taking the example is cats and dogs so labeling data is there. Suppose my new data is giraffe. So with respect to the trained data, the giraffe maybe maybe comes under the category of the cats or dog, but that is not correct. So this is the one of the major drawback in the supervisor learning method. So this can be overcome by introducing the unsupervisor learning method. So last slide, please. I'm going to finish it. Uh, what is the difference between the supervised and unsupervised machine learning techniques? So based on the input data, algorithms are trained using label data. You know that how I trained the data. You see that I have trained this data based on the labeling only. I have trained the how I have been extracted. These are the uh, subtables. You see that based on this label data only. If the label data is not there, then it should, I should not be able to extract this. So that what is that? Algorithms are trained using label data. Algorithms are used against data which is not labeled. That is what unsupervised learning. In terms of the complexity, so in supervised machine learning technique, it is a simpler method, but it is a computationally complex. Why it is a computational complex? Here I'm not bothering about the features. So here I have to be identify the features, then how to go for the clustering. So that it requires a more com time, more time. So that computational complex. Accuracy, see that in terms of the accuracy. In supervised machine learning, highly accurate and trustworthy method. So why it is highly accurate means when I receive the proper data, then definitely it is highly accurate. If I should not receive the proper data, then there is a possibility of the inaccurate. So the trustworthy method. So what I want to do, the major challenging is data pre-processing, data cleaning is very much important in the supervisor learning method. Here is a less accurate and trustworthy method. Why it is a less accurate means I have to try to identify the features on the basis of the features I have to be good divide into as maximum as possible number of clusters. So that is what the major drawback in this method. And what are the challenges in supervised machine learning? What are the challenges in supervised machine learning? The one first challenge is irrelevant input features present training data could give inaccurate results. Okay, irrelevant input feature present training data could give inaccurate results. Data preparation and pre-processing is always a challenge. Okay. So preparation and pre-processing, missing values, filling, all these are the very challenging tasks only. Suppose if I should not properly fill the missing values, then I may get the less accuracy value. Accuracy suffers when impossible, unlikely, and incomplete values have been inputted as a train data, training data. Suppose there is a certain incomplete values are there, then it may be that gives a less accuracy. Selection of the right features, to train the machine on. So this is what very much important. Right features I want to select and how to be train the machine. So this is also one of the complex tasks. Okay. In this case, what I want to do, I want to go for the unsupervised learning method when I should not be able to rightly find out the features.